From Viking halls to the cities of the future, Terrain Buffs will love our foreground hub. Watch gaming tables of all genres come to life at beastsofwar.com. Become a general of mighty armies at the Kings of War Hub. Take command of elves, dwarves and orcs in this game of massed fantasy combat on beastsofwar.com. Hello everybody and welcome. I am joined in the studio by Sam. Yep. And of course, you will remember him from Dreadball Academy many, many moons ago. It is the fabulous, the fantastic Mr. James M. Hewitt. Hello! I had so much more hair then. <laughs> <laughs> so I, did I. I, I, I. No, no, I, wait. You're talking about having hair. Just look at me. Look at me. James, yeah, I, you can't look at me. I, I've never I known you not know. bald. So, really? Yeah. You've I've ne- only ever known me with the shaved head? Yeah. Okay, I have some interesting photos to show you. <laughs> <laughs> At least your beard's more sensible these days. Yeah. Well, you know, you know, I'm kind of rocking the Doctor Strange thing now with the two bars of grey in it. It's looking pretty good. Just get the big high collar as well. I think that, that look will suit you. Yeah, maybe, maybe. Uh, we're going to ask for that to be stitched onto all this Beast of War branded clothing from now on. Uh, yes, so I, 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 I just need to get Beard of War done on mine. <laughs> Fair Perfect. Enough. Anyway. Have you been, James? What have you been up to since the last time you were? It's been a little while, hasn't it? I think. Yeah. Uh, I'm trying to think. I, I was working, trying to work out. Is it about four, or five years? I think since I was on the show. So uh, well, lots has least. happened since then. Mm. At least. Um, yeah, I've, I, I've I've been away. So um, last time I saw you guys, uh, I was heading off to Games Workshop. Yes. Uh, I was there for about three and a bit years, maybe. I think so. It's probably about three and a bit years since I've been yeah. uh, back with you. Um, I spent time initially as part of the Sistel Rules team, so I was working on oh. uh, 40k, Age of Sigma, uh, did a few standalone board games, Betrayal at Kalth, Silver Tower, Gore Chosen, uh, and then I went and worked for the Specialist Games team, or sorry, Specialist Brands, as it was called, because, you know, uh, modern corporate speak of that. Yes. No one called it Specialist Brands, we were the Specialist Games team, uh, but we did Necromunda, Blood Bowl, uh, Adeptus Titanicus, which hasn't come out yet, it's been done Ooh. for a while. Um, one day we did a demo of the game uh, at the Horus Heresy weekender last year so uh, it, the rules have been shown off they just haven't been released yet but I'm assured that one day the seal will be rolled back and the game will be revealed to the public uh, uh, and on that day you will know what it's like I think yeah. uh, I think Justin's uh, pupils just dilated and I'm, like, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry I'm a Mecca fan I love big stompy robots oh, look here's one for you James what was it like being behind the curtain? What was it like working at Workshop? Was it fun? Yeah, really good, actually. What's, what's nice is it's a really nice group of people. Everyone there is really trying really hard to do the best they can. Mm. Um, and it's quite easy for when you're standing on the outside to look at it and think, uh, oh, they don't care about this or, or you know, whatever. Um, but actually, everyone has tried really hard. The only difficulty is when you've got something on that scale, it's really hard to please everyone and also to make any kind of changes uh, in a sort of a, a sensible time span. So, yeah. um, looking at Age of Sigma, for example, I think there were definitely a few missteps initially with mm. the way Age of Sigma came out. But look at the way it's rallied with the new 40k; it's now looking phenomenal, you know. Yeah. Um, and, and that's like one of the kind of examples of the way stuff happens there. T- change takes time, but mm. everyone really wants to do the best they can. Uh, but yeah, lovely bunch of people. I'm still in touch with most of them. Still on good terms. Nice. Um, so yeah, it's, I really enjoyed it, uh, and I learned loads, learned an amazing amount of stuff there. That's fantastic. Excellent. That's fantastic. So, uh, since leaving Workshop, what was the next step in the life of Mr. M. Hewitt? So, uh, the M is silent, of course, we know this, <laughs> from, from the olden days. Uh, yeah, no, I, I started up a little company called Needy Cat Games, because we've got a cat that's really needy, and always interrupts <laughs> our games. And I told him that if I ever do my own company, I'm naming it after you, uh, if you, you're doing one more board game, and sure enough, yeah. Uh, so yeah, Needy Cat Games, uh, and we do um, kind of freelance board game design, consultancy, business support, that sort of thing uh-huh. for the industry. Yeah, I think every gamer who has played around a cat knows that cats count as difficult terrain. Oh, no, Absolutely, you, yeah. The cats don't have that finger of God ability where it's just like, oh, you, you like this miniature? Wow, it's off the yeah, table. Yeah. See, Nottingham is actually, we've got a, a couple of board game cafes, and we've also got a cat cafe, like you go in and there's cats everywhere. Oh, yes. And I really want to combine the two and just really ruin everyone's fun. <laughs> that that oh. could be interesting. I actually did see a video years ago about a, uh, a Japanese company 
that actually allowed their their workers to bring their cats into the office because it would be nice and relaxing for them. <laughs> this was not a good plan. No, no, no. no. Uh, uh, yeah, so so cats. Yeah, don't put them near your stuff. Just don't let them anywhere near anything, really. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so so we need cat games. That's myself and uh, Sophie, who you you guys know. You, you met her back in the day. Um, mm-hmm. Also used to work at games. In fact, so, Sophie, c- c- can I make Sophie wave at the camera? Yes. Yeah, you. yeah work away. Yeah. Sophie, jump over. We're currently in the Needicat office. That's Sophie there. Hi, Sophie. Uh, Hello. She she does all the all the useful stuff. She, that's actually she's not any further away from the camera than me. She's just half the size. <laughs> um, it, it means that she gets paid less. It's great. Oh. Um, but... Wait, no, don't tell them that. Don't tell them that. <laughs> oh, Sam, look at the size of you. Uh... You're my son. <laughs> um, I... Stay over there, please. Um, <laughs> I'm getting threatening looks now. Uh, okay, so, uh, Sophie and myself have. Both come through the games industry. She used to work in games workshops, uh, licensing department, the art department. Mm-hmm. She's got lots of uh, management, business type experience. Um, so between us, yeah, we're kind of offering loads of different services to the games industry. Mm-hmm. Uh, one of which is writing games, which yeah. I, I love. You know that. Mm-hmm. And speaking of writing games, your current project is one that has Sam basically vibrating in his seat right yes. now, just because <laughs> so he loves the IP. So you're working on Hellboy. So. Yes. I think the the first question it has to be how have you found working with the IP because it's it's one of those classic big brands that you mm. know so many game designers would love to sink their teeth into and I know you're probably working on it and doing something really special with it. Yeah, well, thank you. It's 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 been a real blast because uh, so Hellboy when Mantic approached me, I was I was familiar with Hellboy. I read the comics um, like a fair bit when I was a student, which was some time ago. I shan't say how long, <laughs> um, and. You know, I, I knew of Hellboy. I was, I, I liked and respected that universe. Um, among comics, it's quite rare because it's it stayed very kind of self-contained. It's not like a like a Marvel or a DC yeah, uh, yeah. title where loads of people have all jumped in and done different weird things with it. Uh, it's very much you know, uh, Mike Mignola has stayed in control of Hellboy mm-hmm. for the past, I think, twenty years now. Um, and it really shows with this lovely big cohesive universe and so yeah um, mantic came to me and said do you want to do this game and i th- think about three nanoseconds later i'd made my mind up because <laughs> yeah yeah why would you not what an amazing opportunity to, to work on that um i won't lie there's been a lot of reading involved because uh, a lot of stuff has come out over the past 20 years yeah and yeah. i'm still plowing through a lot of it um it was kind of a case of read the key bits, uh, do a lot of online research. There's some, I mean, it's the internet, so people have obviously gathered lots of information in some in, into one place, which is good. Uh, but I'm then reading issues of the comic, which relate to what I, whatever I'm writing. Um, but, yes, yeah, so, I mean, overall, it's been a real adventure. It's such a lovely opportunity to work within such an established universe and try to capture that unique feel of Hellboy because it really is not like much else. Yeah, yeah, right. Important thing then. So the the game itself, we have to wonder what style of a game are we going to be looking at here? Is it going to be competitive, cooperative, story based, mission based? You know, what are we looking at? Yeah, so it's um, it's a fully cooperative game. So you've got all the players working together against the game. The idea is you're each taking on the role of one of the uh, BPRD agents. That's the Bureau for Paranormal Research and Defense, for those that aren't keeping up with the comics. Mm -hmm. Uh, Basically a a shadowy government agent that looks after all the weird paranormal stuff in the world. Uh, So, yeah, you're each taking control of one of these agents and going into a weird, mysterious location and you're tracking down some kind of big, evil bad guy. Mm -hmm. Uh, And the the game is structured so that you have um, basically like like an investigation initially where you're you're moving around the board, you're looking at things, you're uh, examining clues and, you know, exploring new areas. But it always builds up to a big final confrontation, which it's kind of – it's one of the things um, with any good Hellboy story – Generally, there's a lot of a lot of walking around a dark, gloomy, shadowy place, mm-hmm. and it will always culminate in a big punch up. You know, nine times out of ten, yeah. and that's what we what, what we want to do with the game. So that's mm-hmm. that's the way it's uh, it's structured. Uh, what it means is that every game ends with a, with a big bang. This this, this confrontation, no matter how badly you're doing, you always get to have a go at the big boss, which I thought was kind of cool. Yeah, that's yeah. that's brilliant. Hellboy himself is, of course, not subtle. <laughs> he, well, he's about as yeah. subtle as a brick in mid-flight. Um, he's got Precisely. basically a brick for a hand, so yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, and 
Hellboy has this very unique uh, look and feel. Mike Mignola's uh, artwork is incredible. Uh, very dark, gothic atmosphere. How did you try and bring the feel of Hellboy over to the game with the mechanics? It was, yeah, I mean, it's, it's a big thing for me. Whenever I'm designing games, uh, the theme is a real uh, starting point. So I always want to start off with, uh, you know, looking at what what the game should feel like, what the players should be, you know, feeling emotionally when they're playing, that kind of thing. Um, and the mechanics kind of follow on from that. So with Hellboy, I knew it wanted to be a thing where uh, there's a sense of mystery and kind of weird creepiness because that that absolutely pervade, per- pervades the comics. You know, you've got this uh, generally situations where uh, Hellboy or whoever it is is going into a situation. They don't necessarily know what's going on. It's only through investigation that they find out mm. uh, what's happening, um, and then things will jump out the shadows and yeah. whatever. So yeah, so the, the the real thing for me is it's that air of mystery, but also the pace of the game in that it's a slow build which suddenly turns into like a boulder rolling down a hill uh, where you know that there's a big thing coming up. You've got to try to get as much stuff done bef- as possible before it all kicks off. Mm. Uh, and then, it, as I say, at the end, you have a big punch-up. So, uh, yeah. so, yeah, it feels to me that the theme and the mechanics are all kind of bundled into one, really. Sounds like a very interesting sort of pressure cooker scenario you're having there where you're, you're doing your investigation and that pressure's building up until it goes pop. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely, yeah. And, and so what you have is you kind of have, um, just to give you a little detail on some of the mechanics, one of the things you have in the game is a balance between uh, what's called the, the impending doom tracker, mm-hmm. which is like a, a little meter that goes up, uh, or never goes down, only goes up, uh, and the information gathered track, which is another one that goes up. And uh, impending doom generally advances about one every turn. Uh, sometimes it will go faster, sometimes it will go slower. Mm-hmm. Uh, information gathered, you advance by investigating, uh, looking for clues, that sort of thing. Uh, and you want this one to be as high as possible before this one hits a certain point. Right. Uh, and so as a player, you're constantly having to decide, do we have time to go and explore that room? Is it worth it? Do we think it's worth the risk? Which means that as you carry on through the game, it gets really tense. <laughs> and I love that. Yeah. that that's really cool. Yeah. All right, Sam, I'm going to say this now. Dibs yeah. on Abe. On Abe? Yeah, I'm playing Abe every game. My favourite character. That's fair Excellent. enough. That's fair enough. Uh, there is one mechanic I'm really interested in digging in deeper, though. Yeah, uh, sure. The case files. Can you tell us a bit more about that? Because that sounds like a really interesting way to approach the game. Yeah, absolutely. So this sort of drew on... Uh elements of so there have been a lot of games in recent years that have used a similar sort of thing but i wanted to adapt it for a miniatures game uh so it's the idea of a deck of cards uh driving the narrative and the pace of the game so the case file deck the idea is when you open your box you'll have a number of uh you know bosses and and evil bad guys whatever else you have a bunch of sealed Uh, what we call case file packs Mm -hmm. and each one of these will contain a few cards that get shuffled into your other card decks to add some theme and flavor Uh, but you also get this this case file deck which is currently about 10 cards per case but we're working it might be more might be less Mm -hmm. Um, and the idea is that becomes like a static block of cards you don't shuffle it you don't look through it uh, you, you only interact with the top card of the stack and it will tell you when to turn it over and read the back or when to discard it and so forth. Uh, and what it lets you do is uh, you have that drip feed of information. So what I was saying earlier about the air of mystery, that really is driven by the case file deck. So, uh, for example, it might say, flip this card uh, when the agents find a particular thing or when there are this many enemies on the board or whatever it might be. Uh, and it means that you have lots of little trigger points which mean that your actions and your decisions as players directly affect the the events in the game. Um, and for me, what that does is it's like having like a games master running the game, like it's, like it's a role playing game almost, but mm-hmm. the game does it for you. Excellent. And that the great thing about that that does capture the whole BPRD paranormal yeah. investigation feel yeah. of it as well, yeah. which is yeah, something absolutely. that drew me into Hellboy originally as well. Yeah, I have to wonder though. I I know some gamers out there when it comes to exploration games, they kind of get analysis paralysis sometimes where they're yeah. holding back, going, "I don't want to open the box. There might be something in there." <laughs> so I I don't know. I think this is a game I have to play with Warren because he's the guy that's going to rock up and go, "Oh, I'm going to open that." Oh wait, there's something yeah. gribbly inside. And why is it on my face? No. So we'll let him play Hellboy. Yes. Uh, but obviously, no, no. Obviously, Warren has to play Hellboy. 
Yeah. In fact, okay, cool. what what characters do we have the options of playing with, James? Just because so, I want to see if I can assign yeah. the the different members of the team to different characters. <laughs> It's like there was, I saw a thing online ages ago, which was saying that you can you know, everyone falls into a personality type based on the four Ninja Turtles. <laughs> I'm fairly certain we have a similar thing with the Hellboy characters. Uh, so in the core box, you've got Hellboy, who is kind of your impulsive, run forward, punch first, ask questions later kind of character. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's a bit tanky; he can take damage. You know, I mean, I, I'm, I'm naming no names here, but. We're all thinking Warren, yeah? Yeah, we're, we're all thinking, thinking Warren. Warren. Yeah, definitely, definitely thinking Warren. Yeah. Um, I, I'm always thinking Warren, though. You know, I miss the guy. Oh. Um, but, yes, yeah, so you got that. you got Abe Sapien, who is – he's more adaptable. He's a bit quicker, a bit nippier. He's a decent shot. Uh, he's kind of more a st- strategic player. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, make your own mind up as to who that could be. Uh, now, you've got Liz Sherman. Liz is a really interesting one because she is the – uh, she's a, 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 a pyro, pyrokinetic, pyrokinetic. What, what would the word be? Pyromancer, I suppose. Yeah. Um, she makes the fire happen with her brain. <laughs> yes. Uh, she's a one-way pyrokinetic, though. She she makes the fire happen. She doesn't make the fire go away again, which can occasionally be problematic. Um, she doesn't really focus on the investigation. She's more about just setting fire to things. And she has a really interesting mechanic where she can uh, kind of unleash more and more power to make her attacks more powerful, do more damage. If it goes too high, though, she can explode, which, you know, that's that's never a good thing for anyone, is it, really? Yeah, no, no, I hate it when that it's happens. It's kind of a bad thing. Uh, <laughs> that particular yeah. character, I would probably put John online for that one. Yeah, yeah. I, I know um, he likes the burning, burning goodness. <laughs> Fair enough. There's a certain sort of person that just goes for it. So the other day, we did a little playthrough video with um, a different YouTube channel. Um, I've been cheating on you guys, I'm sorry. Oh. Uh, but, uh, yeah, Andy James, from Black my heart. came on. <laughs> and uh, yeah we had like a full playthrough and uh, my mate Adam who I've been playing with for years I barely started describing the characters and he was like fire yes please <laughs> that was him so yeah um, and finally we have Johan Kraus who yeah. is kind of the polar opposite of Hellboy which is interesting because in the comics uh, he was brought into the team to replace Hellboy when, when he left uh, so it can be a little bit strange to comic readers you know why have you got both of them on the team at the same time it was actually suggested by Mike himself um, because they're just a cool balanced set of mm. agents but uh, yeah Johan is basically a, a dead uh, paranormal researcher from Germany who is uh, his ghost stuck around long story but he's he's like a dead man walking around in a containment suit, yeah. uh, and he is very analytical, very good at picking up clues. Not great in a fight, um, but he can do all sorts of cool things like projecting his astral form across the board to yeah. uh, explore things or possessing dead bad guys. Yeah. So uh, yeah, that that that's your four really. Oh. He's definitely my favorite of the uh, the the BPR the A team. Uh, yeah. yeah, I really like um, it. Man. And the miniature is really cool. I'm sure you guys can get a photo up. Yes. If, uh, yeah. One of over to you. Yeah, the uh, I, I love it. It's such a cool model, especially the uh, the paint job that um, Angel did. Angel Geraldo has, has done yeah. some amazing work on it. The blending on the on the mask is just astounding. There is one character that actually showed up in the uh, uh, in the previews that I'm very excited to see. Lobster Johnson. Who? There he is. The yeah, lobster. Absolutely. The lobster. Okay, this is yeah. maybe one of the comics I've not read. Oh yeah, so yeah, he he's like a 1930s pulp hero uh, who, like you know, legend has it. Well, yeah, you know, the the public uh, story is that he was just a comic book character, but actually he was actually a real person going out fighting crime and you know taking taking on the Nazis and things. Uh, and I think he died uh, trying to stop a Nazi rocket launch in the 30s, but his ghost is still around, uh, <laughs> you know, fighting crime and stopping the paranormal. No, no. And it's just such a cool model, and mm-hmm. that's been shown off already. And he just looks amazing. So haven't written his rules yet, so I'm looking forward to working out how I make mm. that work in the game. Uh, Lobster Johnson is such a fun character. Yeah. Yeah. Are, are you are you going to be uh, making him work as a ghost or as his original pulp hero self? Well, I think it has to be as as a ghost because that's where he is in the sort of timeline that the rest mm. of the guys are, are around doing stuff. But I suppose there's always the opportunity to have a double sided card and flip it maybe for historical battles. You know? Oh, that would be uh, fun. Ooh. Yeah. Who knows? Watch this space. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, no, I assume he's not in the core set, so. No. Let's let's actually quickly run yeah. through, James. What is actually in the, the core set for people who jump in on the Kickstarter? 
So, uh, the initial kind of pledge level includes some stuff. Now, I'm just going to quickly check what my screen says because I've, I've got the information here. Rather than guess, I would rather actually have the stuff and tell you. Uh -huh. And obviously, uh, be, this being a mounted Kickstarter, I'm fairly certain that as um, you know, time goes by, they're going to add more and more stuff to it. But initially, well, anyway... Overall, the, the general gist is you've got your four characters, you've got loads of game components, you've got uh, board tiles, you've got uh, dice, various plastic bits and pieces. Uh, you've got, now in the, in the core kind of box, the retail box that's planned, I think, it's um, not as much as the Kickstarter, but it's going to be nine uh, frog monsters who are kind of the generic mm -hmm. grunty bad guy that we've got. Uh, you've got a bunch of uh, frog swarms, which kind of act as harbingers of doom in the game. Uh, you and then as well in the uh, oh sorry, you've also got three big bosses. So you've got Rasputin. Uh, if you've seen the Hellboy movie, you'll know exactly who he is. Uh, he's also he's throughout the comics. Yeah. You've got uh, a really really big frog monster, and uh, the tentacles of uh, oh my brain's going black. Og oh, Druhem, I believe, what is a huge colossal ancient evil beast yeah. that lives uh, underground and waves its tentacles around and oh, grabs the Jihad. Yeah. yeah the that is a very good uh, range of the sort of big bads hellboy will face you've got the the scheming machinations of evil of the evil sorcerer yep. Sputin, mm -hmm. the big mo the big frog monster who he's going to punch repeatedly in the face yeah. and then yep. the eldritch horror aspect yeah. Yeah. that's it i mean so one of the um interesting things is with the case files you won't necessarily know what you're facing at the end ah. so even though you'll know which models you've got in your collection you know you, you know that the box contains these bosses mm -hmm. when you go on a case file what you'll get is almost like a little uh, dossier telling you there have been reports of you know strange sightings of this this is happening and then it won't be until you actually get through it and start picking up information through the case file deck that you'll, you'll realize oh hang on we're finding Rasputin Yes, you can kind of plan the things accordingly, and, what, and like you say, what it means is that the the style of confrontation will be different for each one. So one of them is going to be clearly a, just a big punch up brawl. Yeah, uh, one of them is you know potentially trying to get out of a, a building before it all collapses down because there are tentacles pulling down the foundations. Yeah, yeah. there's all sorts of variety in there, you know. I uh, cannot good. wait to play this game. <laughs> yeah, uh, honestly, as we... well. Actually, I'm, I'm just. Oh, sorry, go on. No, no, after you, James, after you. This yeah. is, this is your time to the, uh, I found my, my link, uh, which has the information on it. So, uh, yes, yeah, so I say we've got a load of uh, minions in the set. The Kickstarter bundle contains even more minions. We're including a gameplay mode, which is uh, going to have just so many bad guys running at you, basically. That, uh, like a swarming mode kind of thing. Ooh. That's all planned, because people love having lots of miniatures on a board, so we want to include the option for that. Uh, we've got some expansion content in there. We've got uh, Nazi troopers and big of colossal course. space space worms. Yep. There's all sorts of things happening, basically. Right. The next thing then is, as soon as this goes live, I expect it to go pretty nuclear. Wow. Well, you know, I'm I'm expecting yeah. this thing to fund in about an hour. <laughs> I'm going to say that an hour max before it funds. I, mm. I've I've got a shiny pound coin on seven minutes. That's my, really. Uh, that's my really? guess, yeah. All right, I, I will join you in that. I will put a shiny pound <laughs> coin on within one hour. And Perfect. I will put some shiny pound coins into making sure that it happens within seven minutes. <laughs> <laughs> just just uh, slot those into your computer somehow. Yeah. <laughs> that's, how, that's how, uh, that's that's how, how online payment works. No, right? no, that's how Bitcoin works. You just yeah. put it into the floppy drive. Oh, right. <laughs> don't do it at home. I swear, don't do it at home. Don't, please. That was a very silly comment. Wait. I don't think anyone's got floppy drives anymore, to be fair, so that's probably safe. I, I guarantee you there is probably one or two of the, the older generation of Wargamer who still have a, a PC that runs on Windows 95. Absolutely. But my latest laptop yeah, doesn't have really? a CD drive, which is crazy. Um, oh, man. But yeah, so there's loads of stuff in the Kickstarter. There, there's extra kind of beasts and monsters. There's an exclusive um, Hellboy sculpt where he's got his horns and he's really angry looking. Mm, yeah. Um, and then, of course, lots of stretch goals planned as well. Um, uh, speaking which, of stretch goals, can you can you yeah. maybe tease one or two of those for everybody? Get them excited. Ooh, ooh, um, well, I can't say for certain because I, I don't know if I'm allowed to. What I will say though is, if you've read the Hellboy comics and you've thought, "Wow, that's really cool," I wish that was in the game. 
chances are we've done the same thing and have already started sculpting it. <laughs> so uh, especially in the, in the earlier issues, I mean, a lot of the the initial stuff is based off the earlier issues of the comics mm. uh, where you've got... Um, I mean, now I'm not saying any of these things are going to be in the game necessarily, but for example, the comics feature uh, German cyborg war gorillas. Um, yes. Uh, you know various um characters like roger the homunculus who is um like a a, a, a golem brought to life uh, who works with the bprd various cool things that you know like i say if it's in the comics chances yeah. are it'll be in the game all right well what was what was your favorite thing from the comics that might or might not be there oh it's difficult i mean so as we already said lobster johnson is one pretty he's pretty high up there yeah. one of the bits that is really cool though is in oh it's kind of it's a fair way into the, the main hellboy run uh there's a section where it talks about uh hellboy basically lost about five years of his life um he, got, he went on, on a big like drunken weekend <laughs> which happens after about five years yeah uh, where he went down to mexico and hung out with a trio of Mexican wrestler brothers, like luchadors with the masks and everything, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, who were wrestlers turned monster hunters, and he spent the time oh, hunting yes. vampires in Mexico. Um, and that is just such a cool story. Um, I, I don't know uh, Rob, who is Mantic's community manager, I think he's taken up the reins of Dreadball Academy, I think, is that right? Uh, 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 I believe so. He's one of the guys, but he, uh, yeah, he's, he's a big fan of that story arc, so I'd be very surprised if we don't see that. Okay, okay. Although I can only imagine what Hellboy would be like going on a bender. I mean, like, he, he would probably turn back up to the office and go, you know, everybody goes, Hellboy, where the hell were you? We had monsters and stuff. I went out, <laughs> I found a liquor store, and I drank it. That's pretty much what happens, yeah. Pretty much it, yeah. <laughs> mm. uh, Mike Mignola, if you see this, man, you are a mad genius, and I love your mind. Yeah, <laughs> it's wonderful. Uh, I love it. What I love is when you read in the Hellboy comics, there are loads of um, like before each story. Generally, there's, there's a little little note from him about you know how he wrote it and where it came from. Mm, yes, and loads of them begin with "I've got no idea what inspired this, but I did it anyway." Or "I think this is inspired by a thing I read once, but I've got no idea what it is." <laughs> and I, I, just, I just love the way he clearly has all these ideas just bursting yeah. out and. Yeah. Yeah, the chance to adapt that for the table is really yeah. cool. It was reading and watching uh, Hellboy that introduced me to so much of the folklore that I've now tried to use in my own stories. The Penangalan. I first discovered that in uh, Hellboy VC. Uh -huh. Oh, become one of my favourite monsters. Okay. Yeah, it's lovely because it's this lovely mix of uh, kind of uh, different folklore from around the world. Yes. And it really is global. You know, you've got things from Europe, Japan, America, but it's that mixed in with almost this sort of dark Lovecraftian style yeah. uh, mythos. It's just a, a wonderful blend. I love it. Mm. All right. Uh, final question then. Uh, James, so we now know the game is definitely coming. It's launching yep. on Kickstarter. When can I actually go to the Mantic booth at an event and possibly get to sit down and have a bit of a go with some of the mechanics and have a little bit of a play about with it? So plans are plans, uh, which obviously are subject to, subject to change. Uh -huh. But the plan is that there should be a downloadable rule book when the Kickstarter goes live. Ooh, Excellent. So okay. People will be able to look at the rules straight away. They're still a work in progress, and we're being very open about that mm -hmm. uh, because we've still got some design work. The core mechanics are kind of locked in, but we're still tweaking and polishing. Um, the Mantic uh, Open Day is coming up. I think that's actually next weekend. Oh. Uh, and I know I'm going to be there. Hopefully there'll be some copies of the Hellboy game. You know, people can come in and have a go. Okay. There. Um, which means from that point onwards, it should be available. But the the thing we're trying to do, no promises, but we're trying, is to actually make a downloadable print-and-play version of the demo game. So you'll be able to actually download it. Hell yes. Stick it to cardboard, Literally. cut it out, and play it at home. Hell yes. Yes. Hell yes. That, that and if, is, if, if you can't, then we're also doing, uh, there's one official Mantic uh, playthrough video. Uh -huh. Another one we've done with, let's say, a different YouTube channel. There are various things. People will be able to be, they'll, they'll be able to see this game very easily. Mm -hmm. We're not trying to kind of, you know, hide it away. We're going loud and proud. All right. And uh, will you have it at like UK Games Expo, Essen, shows like that maybe? Almost certainly. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I'm actually I'm at Expo with a different project, but I'm sure Mantic will be there with uh, with Hellboy showing it off to everyone that comes past. Absolutely Brilliant. fantastic. 
James, it's always a pleasure, mate. Uh, seriously, now we do need to get you back across here for a bit of a visit sometime in the future. Yeah, Sit yeah, down, please play do. Hellboy, in full Hellboy cosplay, of course. Yeah. Do you have any idea how much no. work that is? Uh, no, we're just going to paint them red. <laughs> I'll, yeah, I'll, I'll come as uh, Johan's ectoplasmic form and just be there. Yeah. It'll be so great. Are you saying that you'll only come in spirit? <laughs> no, no. If no. there are spirits, I'll be there. Ah, there we go. <laughs> well, you know, we do have a few haunted locations up around the North Coast here, and some excellent legends that you could look at to go, hmm, could I add something Sweet. extra in here for a bonus scenario? And what you're saying is this is a, a, a work a writing trip, mission. and I yeah. should uh, yeah mission. pay it on the company credit card. Perfect. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> All right, well, James, as always, thank you very much. Everybody out there, get your comments in below. Are you excited for Hellboy, and uh, are you going to be jumping in on the Kickstarter once it goes live? Myself, Sam, and James here would like to thank you very much. We'll move on. We'll see you again very soon. Go ahead and check out our other content on screen now, and be sure to check out beastofwar.com for the latest gaming news and gaming let's plays. And while you're at it, why not hit subscribe and remember to ding our dong. Go on, you know you want to click it. Go on.